parliamentary democracy. As we all know, is that in theory, parliament is one of the key institutions of democracy, playing important role in legislation, oversight, representation of our people. I'm beginning to ask myself to whether the members of parliament elected by the people to represent the people understand their role in parliament. It is evident that our parliamentarians are weak, ineffective, materialistic, and marginalized. I really fail to understand the role of development partners in shaping the effectiveness of a, a country parliament. The question we are beginning to ask ourselves is to whether development partners have double agenda. The responsibilities in ensuring that their engagement is as effective as possible or they are there to support dictators just to defend themselves. This is a question that is bothering me and I keep asking myself whether those partners know what they're doing. I understand that there are various countries who are providing support to parliament in developing countries. There are projects in place providing funding for countries like Cambodia, Ghana, Tanzania, and Uganda, which is based on Paris principle on aid effectiveness. The Paris Declaration on aid effectiveness is an international agreement between donors and recipients of aid so that they could work effectively. The main core is interlocking principles, ownership, alignment, harmonization, managing for results, and mutual accountability. I wonder whether this type of partnership works in an environment where dictators ship where dictatorship is the order of the day. Since partners provided support for Uganda in order to strengthen parliamentary democracy, institutional development, to work with civil society organization, to support a system of emerging democracy, believe me, believe me, It is a thrown away effort. It is a thrown away money. It is something that is creating a 1% economy. And when you create 1% economy, you have 99% who will be dying of poverty. You have 99% who will be turned beggars in their own country. You have 99% that will have no food to eat, no proper job, no proper health care. And then I ask myself, do we really need to continue with this partnership? Development partners, 
place their trust on the Constitution of 1995, which they believe would provide the basis for the reemergement of Uganda Parliament in the late 1990s and believe that it would modernize Parliament in 1996. And in 1996, the Parliament was not modernized. In 1997, the Parliament remained the same. In 2019, the Parliament became a source of corruption. The Parliament became a source where members of Parliament get a free gift from the state. The state buy them cars in return for their votes. The state give them five million to service their cars when they're going to their constituencies. So these development partners, since then and up to today, they have been supporting corruption within the government itself. They have been supporting the dictators. And those same dictators are still in power after today. They put their money on the Administration of Parliament Act of 1997 that established a parliamentary commission, a parliamentary service separated from civil service. Development partners played a role in supporting the institution. What they didn't know at that moment was that they were supporting dictatorship in the making. They offered Uganda Technical Assistance Project that ran from 1998 to 2002. It was implemented with the support of USAID. They were also involved in the establishment of the Independent Parliamentary Budget Office. They were then in business in 2001. The institutions they set up was the Parliamentary Commission, the Parliamentary Service, and the Parliamentary Budget Office, set up to help Parliament establish a clear identity and the infrastructure that can help them play its role more respective, effectively as regards to financial oversight. That was a good start, but the parliamentarians, as they are, were all compromised and turned into a rubber stamp. The second stage on institutional development, so more development parties take more of a role, working closely in various organizations. We have the organization, the American Organization of USAID, UNDP, and Irish Aid. They all decided to create Parliamentary Development and Coordination Office, PDCO, and the production of Parliamentary Strategic Investment and Development Plan. The Office of Parliamentary professional development was established in 2003 with strong support of development partners.
the European Union contributed to parliamentary strengthening is a part of wider human rights and good governance programs. The project was based on working with state actors, including parliament, as well as the police and prison, and working with civil society actors, including the media, was also passed through the latest phase of support for parliamentary strengthening in Uganda called deepening democracy. That ran from 2008 to 2011. The budget was in excess of $20 million. The elements within deepening democracy were political parties, civil education, civil society, the media, and parliament that was coordinated by an independent program management unit hosted by the NIDA. It involved numbers of development partners who were part and parcel of Partnership for Democracy and Governance. The group include United Kingdom, Ireland, the Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. We say UNDP and the EU was not part of the program, although they remain part of wider democratization working group, which the chairman was aside. The component of deepening democracy on strengthening the institution of parliament was not a bad idea. But in reality, the whole process, the whole process turned our members of parliament into monsters that only believe in money and their support in maintaining dictatorship. We have not achieved much as a multi-party democracy. We have not achieved effective oversight of the executive by the selected committees. The parliament support services to various committees and parliamentarians. Uganda has been at the forefront of effort to enhance the effectiveness of aid for many years. Supporters of the Paris Agenda with many donors providing the country with large volume of development assistance in different ways. In different ways. The Uganda interest is simple. They are keen to ensure that they receive just aid with low transaction costs. But what the donors close their eyes to is the fact that they are creating dictatorship, that the parliament became a part of an institutionalized corruption. They themselves are involved in accepting bribes from state in order to pass legislation. Development partners are not stunning their head up. They are not. You see, I keep asking myself, what's it really worth to keep financing dictatorship, even though we knew 
that things were not going well. I hope those who had been funding our members of parliament will now realize that you have a country where members of parliament, they get a free car, sort of a bribe from the state, that the members of parliament own their private business, private ambulances within the state, that the members of parliament are given contract to supply food to the military organs. This thing had been happening and this thing is happening. I hope you listen and change the system. Thank you for listening.